Like Brother Andy said, in April, we had the privilege of attending the Orange Conference. And as you can see from the video, <clears throat> it was quite a dynamic conference. There were over 8,000 people there from 19 countries, 50 states, and numerous denominations. And it was quite powerful. Despite all the different theological beliefs that everyone had, there was one major thing in common, the belief that Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins. That one common thread is the most important thing to hold on to. The question is, how do we pass the good news of Jesus on to the next generation? I was born in, well, the end of the baby boom generation. <laughs> I won't ask how many of you are in that generation, but the baby boomers followed the greatest generation. With our generation, we believed what the generations before us taught, without question. The generations following the baby boomers began to question what was being taught. Today's generation says, well done is better than well said. The best way to lead our kids to Christ is to live it. I will say that I think our church is doing a lot of things right, but of course there's always more we can do. The church is only as strong as the buy-in of the next generation. The time we have to reach the next generation of children is limited. From the time a child is born, there is only 936 weeks until graduation. When a child is going into the sixth grade, there are only 364 weeks left until they graduate and move on. So you see, what we do today matters tomorrow. One day, we will all pass away, but what we do for our kids and teenagers now will leave behind a legacy. A legacy that one day they will do for the generations behind them what you are doing for their generation today. This is how a spiritual legacy is passed from one generation to the next. This is how the church moves from today into tomorrow with a message of faith, hope, and love. We have a very loving church and love matters. Unless you come visit the kids' classes on Wednesday nights, you may not realize that we have kids coming here that are not members. Some belong to other churches and some don't attend church anywhere. They have found their way here through your prayers for our kids and our kids inviting their friends and their friends inviting their friends. And although their attendance may not always be consistent, it is really cool to see the love of Jesus being taught and modeled by our church members. I will leave you with this to think about. It is really important for all of us to show love to all of these children. You may feel that a hug on a Sunday morning and asking a kid how his day went on Wednesday night doesn't matter a whole lot, but every child is just one caring adult away from being a success. When they see us living and loving God, they learn to love God. When a kid loves God, it leads to a deeper faith. When a kid loves God, it leads to loving others. When a kid loves others, it leads to stronger relationships. When a kid loves God, it leads to loving themselves. And when a kid loves themselves, it leads to them making smarter decisions. And now Lauren will share some statistics with you. So before we touch on how we help our church be better, we must first understand the nature of the problem and the why. So these are just some statistics. 3.2 million kids are victims of bullying at school each year. 1.2 million kids will drop out of school each year. Suicide is the second leading cause of death in preteens and teens. Currently, 22% of 18 to 22 year olds are claiming no religion. And by the time that kids and students in our ministries are 29 years old, 80% of them will be gone from the church. But like we said, these statistics do not account for a Casey or an Aaron, each student is one caring adult away from being a success story instead of a statistic. So the question we are led to ask is how can we honor each type of family and student here? How can we value every single student, child, and family, even if they are skeptical or wounded? I'm gonna let Aaron touch on that. So as you can see for the conference, they shared a lot of research on how the church 
could reach the next generation and really how we can thrive. And they said, in order to thrive as a church, church is a church body, not just Oak Grove United Methodist, we need to put our priorities into the young families, into the parents, because we need to show that we support a parent to win. We want our parents to win so that the church can win. And when they talk about young adults and young families, that's anyone who's bringing in children to our children's programs, youth. It's students who are graduating and going to college. It is uh, people who have recently graduated. They may be married. They may not be married. It's supporting the young families, the young parents, the young people. So that way, when the parents, the young people win, our church wins. One thing that I took from the conference, it was a gut-wrenching moment. Um, they said, ask yourself, do we want to have parents win or do we want our parents to help our church win? And it took me a couple seconds to think about it. So ask yourself, do you want your parents to win or do you want your parents to help our church win? Well, I wanted our parents to help our church win. And that is what they said was the wrong mindset. And I had to step back and realize that when I was trying to help support this young, young adult group in our church. I wanted them to volunteer back into the ministries. I wasn't necessarily thinking, how can I help them win as parents? Instead, I wanted them to volunteer and help our church win. And so I had to have this paradigm shift, and the conference helped me do that. Instead, we need to help the parents win, help them raise their children, help them support them when they have no clue what's coming next, provide a safe environment for them, their family, the youth, the children, so that they can come and know that whatever they share, they will be accepted. If we help them win, then we help the church win because more young families will want to participate in small groups. More children will come and participate in children ministries and VBS, and more youth will come, and that will ultimately strengthen the church. And so how do we create this environment? Um, some of the things and tips that the Orange Conference gave to us is something that we all can do, is we need to create this warm, comfortable environment that everyone feels like they can come and share their story. The first way to do this wonderful, comfortable environment is to be vulnerable. Go ahead and humble yourself and sit with others, whether it's Sunday morning, whether it's Wednesday night at supper, whatever it may be, humble yourself and go talk to someone that you may not know. I'm guilty of it. I sit with my family. You probably don't want to sit with uh, four kids and uh, me, but that's okay. So I'm guilty of it, but we need to stretch ourselves and go sit with different people. So be vulnerable. And then when we're vulnerable and we're talking to people who are not our common circle, be authentic. They said to have real conversations that matter, and that's going to take time. It takes time to have those conversations. So then the third thing is to hold in their confidence. So hold things in confidence. Build that trusting relationship so that they are comfortable to share their secrets and to open up. And then fourth, how to make this church a comfortable environment is to always share grace. Don't just don't judge what's happening. Instead, find ways to support the church, to support the parents, the children, and the students so that they feel comfortable to share those stories. So in conclusion, um, we wanted to share some of our next steps that we took and that we want to implement here at Oak Grove. Uh, like Casey said, if every child is one adult away from being a success story, how can we at Oak Grove help mentor, help support, and help love every child and student that walks through the door? Or like Lauren, 80% of young people don't walk, I mean, sorry, how can we make sure 80% of young people don't walk away from the church at age 29? And we believe if we place parents and young people at the forefront of every decision we make, then that is how we can serve the next generation. So I charge tonight at Admin Council, open up the room and say, our decisions we make will help young people and young families at Oak Grove and in the community. When we're planning events and activities or children's programs, we have the young families and mentor, uh, people in mind as we're making each decision. And so there are three things that we want to uh, implement soon, hopefully by August. The first is a parent resource wall. We want to have um, two different places where in the church. We have a resource center where people can check out things or just grab different um, helpful tips on how you can be the best parent um, in today's world. One near the food pantry, so that way when the community members are coming to our food pantry, they can um, sit and 
read different materials and maybe something will stick with them so they'll want to bring it home. And then another one near the foyer area for the people who come to church on Sundays. The second is the youth are going to start um, being uh, involved in the children's activities on Wednesday nights. And that is our way to show that every single person can mentor the younger generation. And then finally, we're going to try and host a, uh, monthly, it's going to be called, what well, we think it's called, Family Sunday Fun Day. If we don't like that name, we can change it. But right now, it's Family Sunday Fun Day, um, starting in August. And so once a month, we want the entire church family to come out and just celebrate families. Everybody is a part of this family, and we want to celebrate each other. Whether it's game night, movie night, we may go bowling as a church, something that we can do to celebrate families and making sure that we're putting families first so that the parents and the young adults can win. So the Orange Conference charged all of us with one question, and we'll leave that with you. How can we work better together to help support the next generation of believers?